this idea of diffusion or cognitive diffusion. Don't worry if it sounds like a fancy uh, word. It, it's, it's a way of saying to get a little bit of space and distance from our thoughts so they don't influence and control our behavior automatically without us wanting them to. You know, So it, it's particularly useful for anxiety when we might have thoughts saying, things are dangerous, you better avoid either safety in the world or social danger, so I better avoid in case I, you know, embarrass myself, or depression, which is, you know, might be more like there's no point, or, you know, you're too tired and exhausted, or things are too painful to do things, or there's no hope. You know, with both of those types of thought processes, we want to be able to stand back, observe, get some distance, so that we can decide whether they really help us or not, or whether they keep us fixed where we are so that we can then start to do what matters. Um, so we're gonna look at the way we do diffusion again a little bit in this practice. We'll, we'll look at some of the options around that. Um, very simply, we can acknowledge the thoughts, so we can just notice them and then come back to whatever we're doing in the moment that matters. We can observe them for longer, so we can actually watch our mind for a longer period of time to get better at this distancing. And then the other option is we have naming or labeling. So we can, um, you know, very simply just say thinking and, and label it as thinking. We can give it a more technical label like worrying, judging, ruminating. You know, they're the core three. There might also be things like analyzing, reassuring, checking, um, catastrophizing. Um, self-attack, self-judgment, inner critic. So there might be different labels, technical labels of the type of thoughts we're seeing. And then there's another option if the thoughts are just flying so fast and it's almost hard to catch all of them, we can name the story. So we can give the whole thing a story title. Um, you know, in anxiety, it could be everything's gonna go wrong story or I'm gonna embarrass myself story. You know, in depression, it might be the I'm not good enough story or everything's pointless story or, or there's no hope story. So we, we give the, the thoughts a story title like that so that we can name the whole thing when it comes up. So we'll just do a little bit of practice to, to bring this home using Dropping Anchor. So sit in there comfortably, find in a position that supports the practice where you're also comfortable and knowing that we wanna also be able to do this in life, so it's not that you have to sit still and do it in a meditative way. You know, we wanna bring it into each moment. But right now, sitting in a, maybe a slightly more meditative posture. And closing your eyes or lowering your gaze and fixing it on a spot. And we'll do one loop through, first of all, with dropping anchors. So first of all, just acknowledging your thoughts and feelings. So noticing what's happening in your mind, just acknowledging it, and then noticing what you're feeling in your body, and again acknowledging it. The different feelings in your body right now. Do a quick body scan. Notice what you feel in your head, your chest, abdomen, your body. Name it, name the thoughts and feelings. You might say worry, anxiety, judgment, low mood, numbness, pain. Or you might say curiosity and openness or calm and focus. So whatever it is, whether it's uh, easy, pleasant emotion or a more difficult one, just acknowledging it. Then coming back to your body. So pushing your feet into the ground, adjusting your posture, taking a deep breath, moving your body. You could lift one heel then the other like you're walking on the spot or doing a bit of stretching, a bit of rolling your shoulders, getting into your body and then engaging with the world around you 
and what you're doing. So looking around you, noticing what you see here and what you're doing in this moment and knowing that we have a choice here. Yes, there are thoughts and feelings, but there is also our body that we can get into and take action. And then there is also our attention that we can direct towards what is supportive and helpful whilst acknowledging the difficulty and allowing it to come and go like a radio station in the background. So we're going to do another run through. This time thinking about a time in the week when you did get stuck in your thoughts. A difficult thought loop got activated. Worry about the future. Rumination about the past. Trying to make sense. Asking why. Staying on painful memories or imagining life being different and not being in the pain or judgment, criticizing yourself, criticizing the world, hopelessness, helplessness. So think about a time you got stuck in your thought loop and it pulled you out of the present moment where you were. Remember what was happening and just reactivate that thought loop. Think about the kinds of things that were going through your mind. Was your mind saying, everything's gonna go wrong, I've got to protect this, I've got to think about that, I've got to do this, that, in order to try and prevent it. More worry and anxiety, was it more hopelessness about the future, more depressive thoughts, self-judgment, self-criticism. And simulate it for a moment just so we can get those thoughts going, those difficult thoughts, so we get more skillful at working with them. And then we're going to work through these different diffusion options. So with that difficult thought loop running, first of all, acknowledging it. So acknowledge it, notice the thoughts, notice the feelings in your body, and then come back to your anchor, your breath or your feet on the ground. And then acknowledge those thoughts and feelings again and come back to the anchor, your breath or your feet on the ground. So this is the first step. We just acknowledge when those thoughts come forward and start to dominate attention and dictate our behavior. We just acknowledge them and then refocus on to what matters in the moment. That's our first option. The next option is we can observe for a little bit longer to learn this skill. You don't have to do it very long, but just observing for a few moments. So activate the thought loop again. Remember the types of thoughts that were showing up. I'm not good enough. Things are going to go wrong. I've got to worry about my family. I'm not going to get better. Things are too tough. I should stay in bed. Whatever the thought loop was, get it going again. And then this time just observe it. Let, let go of actively generating the thought loop and just observe what your mind does when you do that. And locating it spatially can help. So where do you hear your thoughts in your head? Where do you see them on your mental screen? If there's images, memories. And it's hard to do this, you'll fall back into the thoughts and you'll get absorbed in them again. So move back into observing. Just practicing this for a few moments can be helpful. So this is observing. We've had acknowledging, we've had observing. We can also do naming or labeling or describing. So naming is to give, first of all, that thought loop a single name. Is it worry? Is it rumination? Is it judgment? Is it something else? Daydreaming, escape fantasies, so imagining a better future away from the pain. Checking and analyzing the past, anal analyzing the present, analyzing feelings, judging feelings. What would you call it? What would you label it? 
It doesn't have to be a perfect label, but just find a broad label. And in life, you would, you would use this. When your mind gets stuck in the loop, you label it, you name it, and then you focus back into where you are and what matters. So you say, ah, oh, judging, right. What, where am I, what am I doing, what's important here? Or you say worrying and then focus back. Or you say rumination. So that's the next option, naming with a single label. And finally, we've got name the story. So this is when the thoughts come really fast. There's so many of them, it's quite hard to catch the individual processes, but you can get the broad theme of the thoughts. So when your mind is really in the thought loop, what would be a short story title that summarizes the types of thoughts? So for example, if it's shame, it might be the not good enough story. If it's worry, it might be everything's gonna go wrong story. If it's rumination, it might be, I've got to figure out the past story. I've got to make sense of this story. Other examples people have had is, you know, my family aren't safe story. I'm a failure story. I'm not good enough story. I'm never going to get better story. So could you summarize it in a single story title? And then once you've done that, name in the story and then focusing back into life, into what you're doing in this moment. So from there, coming back to your body, focusing on movement, dropping anchor, grounding in the body, getting control of our actions, and then engaging in the world around you and what you're doing. So look around, you notice where you are, Notice what you can see and hear, smell, taste, touch, what you're doing, who you're with, the action, the activity, and engaging with that and refocusing. And so you can use the acknowledging and refocusing, acknowledging, refocusing. If stuff gets tough with your mind, you can name it, single label, or name the story, refocus, but you're in this moment. So then opening your eyes if they're closed, coming back to together and I'll just say a few words again about you know there's different options um, so yeah you have different ways of doing this diffusion to thoughts so thoughts are often a real big part of anxiety and depression and other mental health challenges and so we want to be skillful at stepping back distancing getting some choice about how we respond to the thoughts, what we do next, so they don't control us and tip us into avoidance or tip us into problematic coping strategies. And, you know, simplest one of all is just acknowledging the thoughts and then coming back to where you are and what you're doing and what matters. Then we've got observing for a little bit longer if you feel you're really getting stuck in the thoughts to actually step back and observe them for, you know, a few minutes, up to five minutes can really help us learn this skill. If it's really tough to do that, to get this observer position, then you know the labeling and the, the naming is so helpful. Very simply, you can just say thinking, you know, you can just go thinking, I'm noticing thinking, or thinking about, and then whatever the topic is. Or we can go a process label, worry, rumination, judgment, analysis, comparison, um, catastrophizing, um, memories, daydreaming, escape fantasies, something like that. Or if it's coming thick and fast, lots of lots of different thoughts in one go, and it's hard to get those single labels. Let's just get a story title to collect the whole thing in in one story. And then let's use that when we notice all of that happening. And then it's all in service of re-engaging back in life into what matters, into you know what, what, what actions reflect your values, your core values and your compassion and motivation and you know what you want to do next. So 